Good morning or good afternoon everyone. Welcome to our quick live session where today we are going to take you through the new updates in Capture One 21 which came out just earlier today. So if you haven't had a chance to get to grips with them or try them then this is perfect for you because we'll take you through uh, the new features in turn and discuss a little bit of other things as well. Now today I am joined by, let's bring Alex up on screen. Hi Alex. Hi David. How's it going? Good. Oh, Thanks sorry. For having me. I didn't put your name card up. There we go. I do apologize. <laughs> <laughs> um, for those of you who haven't seen Alex on the live sessions before, Alex is one of our several uh, Capture product managers. Um, and you're specifically in charge of, I can't remember now, what, what, what are your fields of uh, Capture One? Um, I'm in charge of the image editing and asset management uh, areas of, of Capture One. Uh, Excellent. The, yeah. Yeah. which uh, style brushes definitely falls into. Um, so we've got style brushes to look at and we've also got uh, a new import viewer to look at as well. Before we get to that, just to let you know, we've also got Diego helping out on the chats on Facebook uh, and YouTube as well. So if you see a response that's not me or Alex magically managing to write at the same time, which would be pretty smart. We've got Diego too. Uh, so any other requests or questions, feel free to pop them in the chat as well. And Alex and I will try and answer some of those as we get through the session. So let's move over to Capture One that we can see on screen. So we're going to look at style brushes in a second. Uh, but first of all, we'll have a look at the new import viewer. So what was the um, what's the word I'm looking for? So what was the reason for updating the import viewer? It had an update in version 21 uh, to make it easier to use faster, improve performance. So why the change again for this release? You can say the previous importer was uh, was updated to make the selection easier. So, so you didn't lose your selection, Got but it. it still only had uh, thumbnails. There, there, right. there were no uh, real options to, to look into what like the, see the, your actual images before importing them. Got it. So you would need to basically import everything and then do your culling after importing. Which is kind of inefficient, really. Yeah, you can say <laughs> it, because if you like me shoot shoot a wedding where you shoot maybe five thousand images, you need to cull it down to six hundred. Yeah. Um, there's no reason for you to to import five thousand images and generate previews for all of these images. So it was it was just a nice way to to take that step of calling earlier in the process. Exactly, much more efficient. So we have a memory card here. So let's pop this in my uh, reader. And then very quickly, you can see the um, import window pops up. And that was 80 shots that were loaded. So that is also pretty quick. Now, obviously, if you're shooting an event, a wedding, that's going to be hundreds. But if 80 is near instantaneous, uh, this SD card is also, it's a 95 megabytes a second, so it's not the fastest SD card out there. But suffice to say, uh, the you know speed of seeing what you've got in your card is very quick. Is that something that was improved, or was it always that fast? I can't remember. You, you can say the loading of what you see has improved because we started to use the embedded preview of the raw file, so you'll got actually it. see something much faster on screen. Cool. All right. So the new thing is this little tiny viewer icon up in the top left hand corner. So if we uh, tap that, then we can see a large view uh, of all of the photos. Now, uh, I've just sneakily put a video in on the card as well, because Alex, you told me that videos are supported as well. Um, so I've just popped a video on the card, which we can also play, which is pretty nice. And it's also a sneaky way just to mention that also in this release, uh, we have live view uh, for Leica as well. But if you do have videos on your uh, card, then you can also browse them in the viewer as well. So, so with that in mind for Leica and this, uh, we can now browse through at speed. I'm just going to hide our heads for a second, Alex, so that people can see what's going on uh, behind us. Oh, uh, I thought I muted you, but I hadn't. Um, so, of course, the main benefit of this is being able to blast through your images super quickly. Uh, what can we say about the size of the view on screen? So let's just go to something. Let's go to a landscape shot like this. So the size of the, the image, do we have any influence over that? Um, no, unfortunately oh. not, because we, we decided that speed 
in this part of the workflow is more important than actually seeing the whole image. So you need to, if, you, if you're calling 5,000 images, you, you need to do it fast. Yep. Um, so if you're in doubt about sharpness, you, you simply uh, select the images, I, I would advise, and then import them. Because the, the thing you see on screen here is, is the built-in preview of the raw file. Got it. And that is dependent on the camera model and what settings you had when you captured the file. So if you're shooting with a black and white simulation, um, the images will actually appear black and white um, nice. for most cameras in this importer, but will, of course, show with the default uh, capture one rendering and, and colors uh, once imported. So there might be some slight uh, inconsistencies depending on your camera model in colors and resolution. Yeah. Uh, but it, it's not affecting the actual images. No. And and suffice to say, as you said, some some camera manufacturers have a relatively small embedded preview. Some have a big preview. So depending on your camera model and so on, you know, the, the size of this preview may be different. I, if I drag this... Uh, import viewer window onto my second monitor, my you know 2K monitor, I can actually enlarge it even more. So, but obviously I can't do that for this demo because you won't be able to see what's going on. So. <laughs> yeah, but you can say that regardless of the, the resolution of the preview, it's still better than just having a thumbnail. Yep, cool. All right, so other fun stuff. Now this is a nice little UI trick. So down the bottom, uh, I'm gonna just check off Pickle, so that will just uh, uncheck everything. So now we're at the point where we could decide exactly what we wanted to uh, import. Um, <clears throat> now the, the UI thing, and I shouldn't say UI because that's a really nerdy uh, development term, but notice that the currently selected photo stays in the center of uh, the thumbnail browser on the right hand side and the reason for that correct me if I'm wrong Alex um, is because if you've shot a, a sequence of photos oh, wrong view sorry if you've shot a sequence of photos uh, then you can see you know the similar photos before and after especially useful at an event or a wedding or something like that exactly yeah so and then to pick a photo uh, very easily. Uh, also, we've reminded you of the keyboard shortcuts down the bottom. So you can see pick is S, unpick is A, or toggle, which is my preferred, is pick, unpick with the space bar. Now, they were already there in uh, Capture on 21, but we've just highlighted the shortcuts down here, just in case you can't remember them. So it's very simple. If I just uh, bring up our overhead camera. Now, I know you can't really see what's going on in the background, but if I tap the space bar, you can just see on this thumbnail over here, that it's toggling the, the pick on and off like so. So it becomes very quick, just a blast through, just using the cursor keys and then the space bar. And you can see the speed that I can browse through is really nice and fast. And then we can whiz through and just decide exactly what photos we want and back and forth with no delay whatsoever. Nice cat as well. So it's um, just really a big improvement over the previous version in terms of speed of import. Definitely. Cool. All right. Um, question from Masood. Does it work for catalog or session? Yes, the import dialog is no different in that respect, is it? It's it's yeah. the same, yeah. Yeah. And even though this is from a memory card, it's still if I wanted to import from an existing location on my hard drive, it's still the same experience too, right? Yep. Yep. So, you know, the the reason why I chose a memory card is just to show you the speed of visibility as well because that's probably that's where you really want the speed is when you're deciding what you want to import and not okay um that i think wraps up the import viewer nicely did i forget anything i don't think so no i don't think so cool but it's uh makes a big difference oh handy shortcut actually for the viewer whatever the shortcut button you're using to hide and show the viewer in capture one uh, outside of the import window, it's the same shortcut. So if you want to, if you're scrolling your thumbnails and then just decide, oh, I wonder how this one looks, if you tap your shortcut, then it's straight away into the viewer. I found that a really nice touch as well. Cool, all right, let's have a look at the super awesome style brushes. So style brushes, this is a request, I guess that's been around for a while, or at least 
some way to speed up the use of layers without having to go through various different steps, I would say, was the request. Yeah, yeah. and it came in all forms and, and factors. Um, also, a, a Dutch burn tool has been requested and a lot of different ways of working with uh, layers and and, uh, and styles as well. Yep. Um, so, so we tried to to join them all together. together. So tell in us a bit about that. In one happy family. OK, so now in our Exposure Tool tab, you should see a tool called Style Brushes. Now, if you don't, you can do the usual right click on any tool tab and add the tool, Style Brushes, like so. Um, you'll also be able to obviously save that into a workspace. And you should see various different of your older workspaces as well. So we don't toss out any of your old workspaces. So if you don't see the style brush tool, just add it as normal. So what you'll see is built in style brushes and custom style brushes custom we come back to we're going to focus on the built in style brushes for this demo just to show you what's possible with what's already into capture one, uh, we've divided them up into three different sections of uh, what would you say, Alex, uh, not genres, but effect. I suppose, or purpose. Yeah, you can say, yeah. Uh, color and lighting contrast is really the two main uh, things that you work on, and mm -hmm. enhancements is something that goes a bit broader and includes, it, it can include everything. Uh, so you can say enhancements is really for specific purposes, while color and lighting contrast, they are more generic. Got it. So let's do a quick demo with this guy. Uh, so under light and contrast, uh, as you said, dodge burn brush or something specific for dodge burn was picked, but we've got all the tools to already do that. What's just a way to, to combine everything. So we're going to grab the dodge brush brighten in brackets, if you can't remember what that is. So straight away, you'll see the brush icon or brush cursor tool is picked. So that immediately I can set to work on my photo. Now that is a bit too big. So I'm just going to make my brush a bit smaller and then brush away on the shot. And then that will gradually lighten my shot. And I say gradually, and we talk about that in a second. So that's created a layer for me, set up the brush parameters and, you know, accelerated that entire process. Because if I, if you've watched any of, of the webinars or lives, Alex will know this, my process tends to be start with a field layer, dial in the adjustments, uh, clear the layer, set up your brush for what you need to do, and then start brushing. So that's four or five steps, which is kind of laborious. This compresses all of that into one step, um, but it gets better as well. If we just turn this layer on and off, so you can see what's happening. So you can see we've just brightened up this fella here a little bit. Now, what if we want to do something else? So let's darken. So I'm going to grab the burn tool. I'm going to change the size of my brush. I'm going to right click and make my brush bigger and just bring your attention to the link box at the bottom. So I have checked on here, link brush with layer and eraser with brush. And very importantly, that links the brush with the layer, exactly what it says. So to show you exactly what's happening, let's uh, just give the background a bit of darkening. You see straight away another layer was created called burn. Uh, so now if I just darken down the background a little bit, just to highlight him slightly. And then if we turn burn on and off, you can see what's happening. But the cool thing is now that was quite a big brush. If we go to the dodge layer, you can see it's reverted my brush back to the smaller size. So I can easily then go back to this layer, do a bit more, go back to the burn layer, do a bit more and so on. So it's really easy to flip flop uh, between the two. So, you know, even though I guess the link brush with layer, that's nothing to do with style brushes, I guess. But it's, no, but, no, but you can say that it, it really elevates the, the workflow that you might have with these um, because the, the style brushes, they could have built in uh, sizes, yep. but that would reset every time you, you clicked on it. So if you link it with the layer, it will remember the, the size of your, of your brush on each layer. Yeah. So, so it really goes nicely together with uh, style brushes. And of course, um, the size of the, you know, if we set the size of a brush to a certain amount, that varies a little depending on the resolution of your photo. So if you're working with a 
12 megapixel camera and a 30 megapixel camera, uh, it would be really annoying if it, if it was always going back to the default and not the specific size uh, that you set as well. So it's, uh, it's, it's really a big speed improvement. So to do a, bot, uh, a dodge burn like that, that quickly is just really, really nice. And also the eraser with brush down here. So if I go to my dodge area, if I decided, you know, I've gone a bit too far, so let's just overdo it here. If I just hit E on my keyboard to get the eraser, now straight away that's turned to the eraser brush with the same settings so I can back it off at exactly the same rate. Oh, and I guess Alex, we should mention the settings here and deliberately flow for, I think most of these brushes is set quite low, isn't it? Yeah, so right. most of the build-in style brushes have, uh, we've decided to to put in a very low flow. That, that means that you can slowly and gradually brush in the effect. So the more you brush on top uh, of your subject or, or your area, the the more impactful the style brush will be. Because if we had flow at 100, it would be one stroke and everything. That's all. <laughs> so you, you couldn't really control it if we didn't set the flow uh, very low. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it, again, um, the fact that it's set automatically for these various different styles works really nice. Let's have, let's go to Nev, our surfer, because he's a good example of a brush which Actually, you made most of these brushes, didn't you, Alex, I think? Yeah, uh, hmm. yeah. technically. I had a lot of input from a lot of photographers and our brand ambassadors, but in the end, uh, yes. Cool. Well, this one works really well, red skin reduction. So you can see Nev here has been out in the sun a bit, and he's got a slight redness on the nose and also just under his chin. So if we grab red skin reduction, go over here and just start brushing. Again, this brush has also a lower, lowish flow. Then that just takes the redness out really nicely. So if we just go down around here as well and under there, and remember with flow, you can slowly allow it to build up. And of course, don't worry, if you think you've gone too far, you can just pull the opacity down. So there's zero and there is a hundred. So I'd probably go something around there. But that's just, again, a really speedy way to to, to take out uh, the skin redness. So well done, Alex. <laughs> that's, uh, that's a cool tool, definitely. Um, another one which uh, is fun, uh, where is it? It's Iris Enhance. So if we grab Iris Enhance, this one we did change the brush size, didn't we, to something relatively small. Yes. So let's make the brush a bit bigger. Incidentally, if you don't know the shortcut for changing the brush size, um, on your keyboards. So control and option, and then a drag of the cursor will change the size. And then for Windows, Alex, I can never remember, it's you need to right click as well at the same time. Yeah, with yeah. Alt uh, press down. Alt, yeah. Alt right click. Okay, so if we just do a bit of Iris Enhance, what's this doing? This is adding a bit of contrast and saturation and, and so on. Yeah, and lifting yeah. the the shadows and, and actually adding some clarity as well. So it's doing a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, so again, I just back that off a little bit, and there we go. So, again, a super easy way just to do a relatively complex string of adjustments, but in just one action. Okay, I'm just going to check uh, for question. Ah, that's a good relevant question from Ronnie. Deep Sky starts with a flow at 100. Is that a mistake? Ooh, very good question. <laughs> good question. And we've got an example right here. So why is Deep Sky, if I right click, let's just make this a bit bigger. Why is Deep Sky at 100? We actually started with a lower flow, but w when we started using it, we realized that we wanted the effect to be uniform across the whole sky. So if it had a lower flow, you might get some like chunky uh, parts of the sky not getting the same effect. Right. So yeah, if you, if you show what it's doing, um, so you, you want this effect to be uniform across the whole sky. Yeah. But if you don't want 100% of the effect, this is where layer opacity comes in. So we can just pull that down and moderate it where you like. 
So it, it, this is this is actually incidentally the reason why we picked this shot. This is from a GFX 100S, just to let you know that's also supported. We've got a list of supported cameras, new supported cameras, which uh, we can show coming up. Um, but yeah, this is deep sky at full noise. And what it's doing, Alex, well, you can actually explain and you can see here as well. Yeah, it's, uh, it's bringing back highlights, but at, at the same time, it's trying to enhance the whites. So it brings out the clouds and then it darkens uh, the blues and adds some clarity. So it really brings some punch into, uh, into blue skies. Very nice. And as usual, whenever you're taking a shot of a nice landscape, there's some guy with a tripod <laughs> messing it up as, as well. <laughs> um, uh, Good question from Jesper. Can the flow or default setting be adjusted? So let's say you, you were using a style brush for a bit and you wanted more flow. Can you override the default or do you, you save a custom brush, I suppose? You cannot really change the built-in brushes, but you can easily uh, select one of the built-in and then from that create a custom brush with the exact settings you want. Okay, we we'll, we we'll do that once we've had a look at a few examples. Uh, aha, so Ed says, another good relevant question. So each time you choose a style brush, it creates a new layer. What if you want to do two adjustments on one layer? You can say Capture One supports layers in the way that whatever adjustments you apply to that layer will be applied where you mask it. Yeah. So if you have both a contrast uh, adjustment and an exposure adjustment, and then start to mask in two different areas, it, both of these adjustments will be applied uh, everywhere you mask. So if you need different kind kinds of adjustments, you, you also need different layers. Otherwise, then there's no way for Capture One to know what adjustment you want uh, on, on each mask. Yeah, and you can see what's going on here with um, Deep Sky, and you can see all the different adjustments. So in a way, Ed, it is multiple adjustments. Um, but if we wanted to do another Deep Sky with a different opacity, just so you know, if you right click, you can say use on new layer. So if you wanted two different dodge layers with different opacity, it's probably a better example, or you know, two sets of iris enhanced with two different people, right click, use on new layer, that just allows you to, to do so. Cool, all right, I'm just checking the questions. Uh, Diego's doing a great job in the background of answering lots and lots and lots. Um, okay, good. All right, um, let's have a look at. I'm just checking for time. We're still good for time. Uh, which which uh, shall we go for now, Alex? We probably won't get through all of these, but if you've um, got a favourite, we lighten this try guy's the... hat. Remember? Yeah, try oh. that one. Okay, so Actually. let's bring this one up. So we've got our man here. So we've got under light and contrast. Uh, what were you looking for? It was shadows recover, wasn't it? So if we pick shadows recover, uh, let's make that a little bit smaller. And then if I just brush under the brim of the hat, a couple of strokes and we can just lighten that slightly. Works very nicely. Again, always moderate your opacity if you want to play with that. And we also tried contrast plus, didn't we? Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Um, we did. So contrast plus, is that purely contrast or is it a mix of other stuff? This one is a purely contrast, yes, okay, using so. the contrast slider. So it's, so it's pretty generic. So if we do but that. But if, if, you, if you want to do more advanced contrast, you have the shadows darken and the highlights brighten. Right. So you could do a combination of the two. Yes. And actually, we could probably do red skin reduction just there as well. There we go. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, all this is all this is adjustments which you could have done previously, but of course, this is just making it more accessible in general. Yes. Uh, yep. Yeah. And we've also, I mean, before we started, we I also, if we just zoom in, there's a, a clone layer just for copying the catch light on on his eye. And we should say when you switch between layers. Don't forget that your brush is persistent as well. So as I move down to the clone layer, it's picked up the, the clone brush automatically. So don't forget when you're linking layers, that's a really super useful feature as well. All right. Um, oh, let's take this one. 
because this was quite an interesting use of the dehaze tool. And to be honest, this is probably what I find I'll be doing more often with the dehaze tool than actually dehazing, mostly because I don't have many hazy shots. Um, but this is a really nice addition. So Haze Add is using the dehaze tool, correct? Yeah, a and a bit extra magic. Other stuff going on in there as well. So if I paint him with Haze Add, then we can simulate a bit more mist rising up from the valley. I'm just going to hit E to erase and then just take out. I went a bit over the top there and then B for brush once more. And then we can just brush in our haze where we want. And if I turn this layer off, uh, then you can see before, sorry, my computer's getting nice and warm from broadcasting and uh, capture winding at the same time. Let's just turn haze on and off like so. So it's just a really nice uh, uh, little addition to add a bit of haze into your shot, bring out some atmosphere. And I think it's just a really nice use of the dehaze tool as well. Also on this one, watch works nice, which works nicely. If we grab add details, let's make this brush a bit smaller and then just start brushing here. This will just crisp up and we can actually see, I'll turn off the layer for you again in a second, but it's actually brought out the raindrops quite nicely uh, on, on here, which you couldn't see before. And what, what's uh, the add detail doing? Is that sharpness, structure, bit of bit of a combination? It's primarily uh, structure and clarity. Right. So if I turn off add detail, actually I'll zoom in to 200%, turn add detail on, you can see what it's doing like so. Oh, yeah, it's actually easy to to accidentally overdo it because with the low flow, you don't really see the change exactly uh, un, un, until you see a before and after of the whole layer. So their opacity is extremely useful. Yeah, if you're not used to using flow, it will build up gradually. So sometimes you think nothing's happening. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, but yeah, always turn your layer on and off. And just to check and don't feel you then have to go back and erase uh, just the uh, opacity so let's uh, zoom out and we've got time for one more and then oh actually while we're on the subject of that because I said I was going to zoom in there is a small change to the zoom level if you uh, want to you can go up to 1600% now but that's the benefit of that is mostly for those of you on 4k or 6k displays if you're lucky enough um so that squeeze in it squeezes in a little mention of that all right okay so one last photo and then a couple of other things that we want to mention and then we shall wrap up our session oh shall we do that one with the clever yeah color definitely brush? so what was the name yeah. of that brush that was uh, it's a saturation minus saturation minus now this isn't just saturation minus over everything correct no it focuses uh, primarily on highly saturated colors so if you look at the the yellow here compared to the slightly desaturated blue in the background mm -hmm. kinds of evens out the the highly saturated colors before it starts to completely desaturate so you can com continue to brush and then completely desaturate all colors mm -hmm. but it'll work uh, harder on the saturated colors first and if we look at the color editor you can see what's going on so really we're targeted to the higher saturated colors and then with a reduction in saturation so in in this area her sleeve is going to get more treatment than the paler wall, which is going to be sitting in yep. this area of the editor, I guess. So that's a super nice adjustment. Oh, last thing to mention, if you want to save your own brush, it's very simple. All you need to do uh, is set up your adjustments on a layer. So whatever you want to happen on your brush, just set up the adjustments on your layer and choose save style brush. And then you'll get a further option of what exactly do you want to save. And then you can also decide what aspects of your brush settings you want to save to. And then simply hit save, call it whatever, my brush. I've got no idea what the adjustments are on this layer. So I'm just going to call it my brush. And then it pops up under custom style brushes here. And you would use it in exactly the same way. 
Cool. All right. So a couple of other things we need to mention. Um, let's hit this button. So new camera support. So we've got Sony A1, GFX 100S, XE4, uh, model from Canon, and then a bunch of Panasonic stuff, which uh, we've caught up with as well. Uh, and in terms of pro standard profiles, got a bunch more pro standard profiles there as well. So we've been working hard to add more and more of those. And I assume Alex Moore is coming of those too. Yeah, the yeah. list is ever expanding. Ever expanding. I, I see uh, a, a slight mistake on this table. The IQ4150 is, of course, not an oh, Olympus not camera. Oh, not an Olympus camera. That would be... It's a, it's a phase one camera. <laughs> that would be my fault from updating a table and changing phase one to Olympus and adding the EM, <laughs> EM1 Mark II and not taking the IQ4150 away. But that's already on there. Um, and as we briefly touched on in the uh, download, or sorry, in the import viewer, that uh, we showed the video. There's also live view for some Leica models as well. So before we finish, uh, I'm just gonna look, see if we've got time for uh, two questions. Uh, let's see, oh, Bob, we already answered. Can I make my own custom brush? You certainly can, Bob. And there's no limit to the number of brushes you can make, I assume. No. No. Uh, yes, you can tether. Uh, Diego has answered with the GFX 100S. You certainly can. Um, does, oh, that's a question. Can you shoot with the multi-shot? You Capture One supports the multi-shot files from the GFX. Sorry, Alex, I'm just hiding you there. Yes, but you cannot shoot, shoot. Uh, that while shooting multi-shot. Got it. Uh, Jim says, much better workflow with style brushes, create your own to your needs. Exactly. And I would say the ones that, that we put in, or Alex made, that's inspiration to see what you could do as well. But the sky's uh, the limit, really. So if you find yourself doing, um, you know, repetitive options, then of course it makes sense to make it into a style brush. Oh, Bill, ha, we did forget something. Show the Keystone tool. Sorry, Bill, you're quite right. So let's just throw up uh, Capture One back on screen. So the Keystone tool, if I just turn that on, uh, just a simple change basically to make the lines more visible because on some photos, I guess they were just a little bit tricky to see. Yeah, yep. um, the UI basically was designed back when monitors had this famous 1920 resolution yep <laughs> so now that we have higher resolution monitors we of course need to follow up making the the interface uh visible yeah exactly so there we go all right um a couple of other things that uh we need to tell you guys um because this is a dot release so it's 21.1 the trial is reset isn't that right alex so yeah so even if you have capture one 12 uh, or capture on 20 and you've perhaps already done a trial of version 21 the trial is now reset so you can start again um, don't forget to sign up to our newsletter and we'll pop some links into the chat as well so uh, you don't have to go digging for yourself uh, but there'll be a link to download the new trial and also a link to sign up to our newsletter because then you will know when we have any offers coming out and the latest news, when we're going live, when webinars are coming up and so on. If you prefer to listen in Spanish, and it's a much nicer language than English, um, we are having a live session tomorrow at 7 p.m. Central European time with my colleague Maria, who's gonna run through a similar kind of thing in Spanish. And we'll also put uh, the links up that as well. And then I'll be back Thursday without Alex, sadly. Uh, to do a webinar on travel and street photography where we can look into the brush workflow a bit more and use some more of the, the brushes and so on. So that will give an insight into that. Um, of course, Alex, there's also bug fixes and other bits and pieces going on in this release as, as well. Um, I, I haven't seen many come up, but I know with the Apple M1 system, we've put in... A fix for that as well, uh, which was a layer disappearing there is, or something. Yeah, we we are working hard on getting native support for for the silicon M1 uh, Apple. Uh, right now it runs, but there are some issues 
here and there and and uh, one of the most appearing ones was that if you used a heal layer on your images and exported it sometimes that heal layer might just completely be gone that is now fixed uh it's not to say that we now have m1 support still working on that um but we'll uh, of course let you know once it's there excellent and it'll be good yeah it's it's going to be really interesting to see to see the native support but of course capture one is a uh, it's a pretty big application. Uh, it's got a lot of graphics integration into it. So it is it is some work to, to switch it over, but it's gonna be fantastic, I'm sure. Cool. All right, thanks Alex for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thanks to Diego. Let's wave to Diego for answering uh, questions on Facebook and YouTube as well. And uh, if we didn't get to your specific question, sorry, today, there is quite a lot of you. Uh, so, so we did our best to try and reach as many as possible. But you can always hit us up on social media as well. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to our various channels, YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. All right. Thanks again, Alex. And we'll see you soon. Bye now. Thank you. Bye.